Hi friends! It's February and this month our character trait of the month is kindness. Now I know that you all have already been doing little acts of kindness around your school, maybe in your home, and we're going to continue talking about what kindness is, how it feels, and ways that we can be kind. This week we're going to look at a book that helps us understand what it feels like when people are not kind, but then how little acts of kindness can change those feelings and make a change that lasts. The book that we're going to be looking at this week is called The Invisible Boy. And I not only love the story in this book, but I love the illustrator's story. The way that Patrice Barton, the illustrator, the woman who did the art for this story, tells even a deeper story by the way that she changes something in the main character of the book. So as we read it, I want you to, of course, listen to the words, but really look at the pictures. And I want you to notice what happens to Brian, our main character. What changes in the way that he's drawn over the course of the story? When you, when you think you know, maybe just put a finger up while we're reading the book, okay? And then we'll come back and talk about it. And then we are going to learn how to draw people in the same style as Patrice Barton, as she does in this book. And we are going to create our own little kindness story in our journals. So let's read together. The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig illustrated by Patrice Barton. The Invisible Boy. Can you see Brian, the Invisible Boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Mrs. Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first. Then the best friends of the best players. Then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, said Madison. Everybody did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. Thank you for toasting my marshmallow. Space aliens locked in intergalactic battles. I got you now. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Crackers, arg! Yay! and superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. Hi. Hi, friend, have a cookie. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet.
At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Bulgogi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat bulgogi. And the kids laugh. All of them, that is, except Brian. He sits there, wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room and pair off. Brian heads toward Justin. I'm all ready with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Mrs. Carlotti says we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio. Let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Mrs. Carlotti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in the photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think live in a house like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. It's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout, Hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Cookie? Thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. I want you to let's look just again at Brian, how he starts out. What color does the illustrator use when she starts to illustrate Brian? Black and white, right? He's in black and white when everybody else is in bright colors. Any time that Brian feels lonely, invisible, like somebody is being unkind to him, he stays in black and white. But what starts happening here? You see how the illustrator starts to use just a tiny bit of color? when Brian notices somebody else who might need a friend. We see him back in black and white here. But look what happens here. Brian did something kind, even though he felt like nobody was kind to him. He reached out to Justin and wrote him a note of encouragement. And that one kind act caused Justin to reach back out to him. And look what happens to Brian. 
he goes from black and white to color. Back in class, he's feeling alone and invisible again. But look what kindness does. Kindness causes the color to come back into Brian. And look here. The end of the story, we see Brian in full color. When kindness fills him, he is fully alive. Isn't that so cool? The artist has almost a secret language, like she embeds a secret code in her illustrations that help to tell the story. Yes, the words tell a story, but the pictures really tell us what's going on inside of Brian. He felt like the world was an unkind and lonely place. But even in his loneliness, he chose to do something kind, and that kindness came back to him and filled him with life and color and friendship. And so today we are going to write our own little story. First, I'm going to teach you how to draw people in the style of our illustrator. And we're going to draw our first person in black and white. And then you get to make up a story, not with words, though you could add them if you want but then you're going to insert characters into your picture who extend kindness and then add color to your original character. Does that sound complicated? It might, but it's not. All we need for this is your art journal, a pencil, and some colored pencils. So grab your supplies and let's draw together. Okay, let's first take a look at Brian. I want you to just notice some of the simple shapes that make up Brian's body. His head, let's see if we can do that without a shadow, there we go. His head is a circle. His neck is a really little skinny rectangle. His body is a triangle. His shorts are rectangles. His legs are skinny rectangles and his shoes are just triangles again. So let's go ahead, I'll show you what I've drawn. I did myself in the style of this artist. And it, you might wonder, why would you draw yourself, Mrs. Burke? Well, I have to tell you that sometimes adults feel invisible too. Sometimes adults feel sad and lonely or like they don't fit in. It's not just a kid thing. We all feel this way sometimes. So maybe as you draw today, you want to draw yourself. You could draw Brian, you could draw yourself, or you could make up a character. It's really up to you. But it's the same, we're gonna learn the same technique, the circle for the head, skinny rectangle neck, triangle body, rectangle shorts or pants, rectangle legs, and then either ovals or triangles for the shoes. The other thing we're going to draw is the placement of the features on the face. The illustrator put the eyes kind of down low and wide, and they're shaped like letter C's. The nose is just a little dash. And for the mouth, on Brian, he has a little circle here. I put just a little dash for the mouth. And the eyebrows are way up high. And you'll notice that it's not just Brian who's drawn that way, but all of the kids that are drawn that way. Circles, wide eyes, little noses, eyebrows way up high, basic shapes for the body. If you look at all of the kids, you can see that they're all drawn in a similar style. What makes them different is their clothes and the color and the hairstyles, but they're all very similar. And we're gonna start off by drawing our main character in black and white, just like Brian. So grab your pencil, and I started off on a piece of scratch paper you can do that, or you can go right ahead and use your journal. If you're using your journal, I'd like you to turn it horizontally because we're gonna tell a story that moves from left to right in the same way that we read from left to right. So we're gonna start off by drawing our main character in black and white over here. And I'm 
going to show you how to get some of these nice little smudgy details. We're going to do some pencil drawing tricks today. After we draw our main character, then I'm going to give you some time to draw the story that happens next. So let's just mark off about a third of our paper. That means about the width of a hand, and you could just put like a little dot there or something. I'll make mine darker so you can see it, but you don't have to do that. I just know that I'm going to draw my main character right over here. We're gonna sketch with our pencil. That just means we're gonna go a little bit lightly. I will use my pencil a little heavier than you will because uh, I want you to be able to see it on the calendar, or not on the calendar, on the camera. So we're gonna start with a big circle. And when I sketch, I kind of just go around and around and around until I get kind of a circle shape that I like. Go ahead and draw your big loose circle. Notice that this is at the top portion of my page, not way down here. We wanna fill up this whole section of our journal. If you put it down too low, go ahead and use your eraser and move it up. That's what we have these for. Once you've drawn your circle for your head, let's go ahead, actually put this little lady over here so you can see her and see if we can get, let's see if we can see all sorts of inspirations at the same time. There we go. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is draw a little skinny rectangle for the neck. And remember, this is our first sketch. We'll go back and fix things. So if it doesn't look perfect yet, doesn't look how you like it to look yet, just leave it. Then the next thing we're gonna do is draw the shirt area or the upper body, and this is basically a triangle. Now we'll add sleeves and we'll add details but the basic shape is a triangle. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my person in shorts. So I'm gonna do two rectangles for the shorts, one there and one there. You may choose to do pants or a long skirt. If you're gonna do a long skirt, you might do a long rectangle like that. You might choose to do pants, which would be two long rectangles like that but I'm gonna keep mine as shorts. Then I'm gonna add these little legs that are just two skinny little rectangles coming out of the bottom of the shorts. And I'll do some shoes like Brian's. His look more like triangles. Just little triangles on the bottom of those rectangles. Now we've got our circle, rectangle, triangle, rectangles, rectangles, and triangles. Now we can start adding some more detail. I've noticed that in uh, Patricia Barton's illustrations that the ears are down really low. So we're gonna do some little C and a backward C for some ears down low on the head. The eyes are about the same distance as the ears and she often makes just little tiny letter C's for the eyes. Sometimes she does a circle with a little line but very simple and all of her characters just have little lines for their noses and then let's go ahead and draw our original Brian's mouth. Maybe just a little bit of a circle down there. And look at those expressive eyebrows way up high. Sometimes the angle of the eyebrows can really tell you about how somebody feels. What if our character feels angry about their invisibility? Maybe we would do eyebrows like that. Or just maybe sad, worried, confused. We'll put them back like that. Let's go ahead and give our character some hair. I think that I'm gonna make this one because I did myself already with the long hair. I'm gonna make this character have short hair. Just use your pencil. Just 
to draw in those details. If you're drawing yourself, you might think about what your hair looks like. If you look at this picture, this might also give you some ideas. Maybe you have your hair in puffs or pigtails. Maybe you have short curly hair. Maybe you have kind of longer hair or really long hair in a ponytail. Whatever your hair looks like or whatever your main character person looks like, go ahead and draw the hair. And then let's keep, now for my picture, I'm gonna keep the hands behind the back, but you might wanna tell a story um, that's different. Maybe you want your hands to be out. So in this one, if you just want your hands to be behind the back, you can just make little shoulders that kind of hide behind the shirt. You can decide to do the neck of the shirt. You could put a collar on it. You could do, really, you can decorate this any way you want. You could make stripes or plaid or whatever sort of details you want. Then let's talk a little bit about shading because right now this is just an outline, but this one has a lot more depth. I like to use the side of my pencil and just lightly color around the edges. Then watch, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna just rub that a little bit to get a little bit of a blend. Notice here, you see how the illustrator has done that? All even like the cheeks, so very, very softly on the cheeks. Maybe your skin is a little darker color. So you can lightly color like that and then take your finger and gently rub it around and you get a bit of a blend. Now I'm gonna go ahead, when I was sketching, I had some extra marks. I don't have to erase all of them, but I might wanna erase some of them. Let's say I want for my shirt to be pretty dark I'm going to just practice doing some shading. Let's say I want some stripes, but I want those, I want my shirt to be kind of a medium tone. So you can practice. Think about, if you look on our inspiration photo, you can see that the areas are dark where there would be a shadow. So around where the where the shirt covers the shorts, it's a little more shadowy. At the bottom of the shorts, it's a little more shadowy. We'll talk more about shadows and light another time, but this is just kind of practicing and playing around with this rubbing and blending. Go ahead and color in your character, whether it's you or somebody else, and just practice adding some color adding some shadows. Remember, this is just pencil. So if there's something that you do that you don't care for, you can go back and erase it. So I think that's maybe a little much right there. Erase, come back. Maybe I want some really, really, really dark, rosy cheeks. And then you can just blend that in. So take a minute, work on your main character for a second, and then we'll come back and work on the rest. Here's where you become not only an artist, but a storyteller. Whatever character you drew, whether it was you or Brian or somebody else, I want you to imagine a time that maybe you felt left out or alone or invisible. What did you do? Was there anything that made you feel welcome? 
Did somebody do something that helped you? Or did you reach out in kindness to somebody else and did that help? Or maybe you can't think of a time that you yourself did something. Maybe you can imagine an imaginary character who's experiencing some loneliness. What I want you to do with this part of your paper is I want you to draw some act of kindness that changes your main character from black and white to color. So maybe I can imagine that maybe I'm feeling alone. And so the act of kindness is that a friend writes me a letter. So maybe I'm going to draw a friend. Again, I'm going to use that same technique, that circle, rectangle, triangle, rectangles, rectangles and ovals. And I'm going to have this friend reaching out with a letter. Maybe your lonely invisible place is on the playground and you could draw somebody inviting you to play a game with them. Maybe it's in class when you're longing for a buddy and somebody invites you to be their partner. Maybe it's at home and it's a parent that reaches out and invites you to join them to do something that makes you feel welcome. Whatever it is, I want you to go ahead and draw one other person doing something kind to your initial character. This could be an imaginary person or somebody that you know. But we're going to use the same plan as our original. So I'm going to put my ears down low. I'm going to do my eyes down low too. This person is going to be smiling because they're doing something kind for me. Let's see. This person is going to have curly hair and puffs. While I'm working on mine, then I would like for you to work on yours. Our last step, now that we've drawn our act of kindness, is to show with our artist tools how kindness impacts other people. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit of color into my face here. And did you know that you can blend colored pencils too? Not as easily as regular pencils, but you sure can. Maybe I'm going to add some color to my clothes. All of the sudden, the kindness makes a difference. I might even go back and turn that into a smile. because kindness changes people. You can go ahead and grab your colored pencils and color both of your characters. Add a background if you want. You could add words, whatever you want to finish telling your kindness story.
I hope you had fun learning how to draw people in the style of Patricia Barton. But more importantly, I hope that you were able to think about kindness in a new way. It's okay to admit when you feel like people are unkind, but maybe we can be like Brian. And even in our invisibility, even in our loneliness, we can recognize the power of kindness. That when we reach out with one small act of kindness, sometimes that kindness comes back to us and grows and grows in the same way that a black and white picture changes when we add color. Well, keep drawing about kindness and keep being kind and think about ways that you can bring color into other people's lives. I know that you bring color into mine and I sure look forward to being with you again next week as we draw together, even when we're apart. <laughs>